Hey everybody, Mr. Hayes back here, talking through some staff's medics lessons. We are starting binomial distributions, and this is the last section of chapter six. As always, comment, like, subscribe down below. We're going to use a season that just started, the college basketball season, to explain or give the basic background on what binomial distributions will do. And to do that, we are going to actually jump into March, actually it's backtrack into March of 2005. Conference USA tournament, Memphis versus Louisville. Memphis is down by two, and a guy by the name of Darius Washington comes up and attempts a three-pointer as the buzzer as the timer goes off. Buzzer goes off, clock winds up. Anyway, he is fouled. So the question is, was that a good decision by Louisville to foul? Because that's one of the things that you do at the end of basketball games if neither you foul people, right? So anyway, so what are all the different ways? So the first thing to do, we have to talk about what were the possibilities. So he has three shots. So, here are all the different possible ways that the shots could have fallen. Now, there are eight because, again, we've got three different shots. We have two choices for the first, two choices for the second, two choices for the third. Two times two times two is eight. Okay. But see, again, either the ball goes in or it comes out. He makes it or it misses it. None of this, hey, it sits on the rim and it's going to stay there. Okay. No, it's just not going to work. Okay. So, come up with a system if you ever have to do a sample space like this. So, for example, I've got three makes check. Now, instead, what happens if he has two makes, or more importantly, one miss? I'm going to put the miss at the end, the miss in the middle, the miss in the beginning. So now I'm up to four. Now, if I'm going to have two misses, the make could be the first, second, or third, and then obviously he could have three misses. So those are my eight items in my sample space. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to figure out how many different ways could there be to win? So, for example, and Darius Jackson, or Washington, I'm sorry, was a 72% free throw shooter. The way to remember this is that, so if they win, not to remember this, if they're going to win, he needs to make all three baskets. If they're going to go into overtime, he needs to make two out of the three baskets. And then if he, lo to lose, he either needs to have three misses, or as you'll see down here, one miss, or one make and two misses. So, the chances, remember, to figure this out, um, the probability of him making it is 72%. So the probability of him making all three, assuming that they're independent, and we're not going to worry about crowd pressure and all that other stuff, but 72%, 72%, 72%. That works out to be a probability of 0.373 or just over 70 or 37%. For three misses, 28%. Why? Because remember, this is the complement of this. So I'm going to get um, 28% times 28% times 28%. So that is going to be 0.02%. I'm just going to move a screen here so we're getting ready for the video because I'm going to show you the, I know it's great, isn't it? And then down over here, one make and two misses. So it's 72% times 28% times 28%. Now you could do that individually. So I could go 70, uh, where is it over here? 72 times 28 times 28, 28 times 72 times 28, et cetera. But remember multiplication is commutative. So these are all effectively the same. We're just going to multiply it by three. And then this, so that it comes out to be 17%. And then same thing for the overtime, two win or two makes and a law, uh, miss come out to be about 14 and percent. And we have three of those. So that's going to go up to 43.5%. So now what's going to end up happening is we're going to go through and watch what actually happened since most of you were probably not even born then. Actually, some of you were born. Um, but you weren't probably watching the Conference USA game, right? So we're going to go through shot by shot and say, what's the probability of Memphis winning? So in the beginning, the Louisville, Louisville is up by two, three shots remaining. These probabilities are what we based off of up here. The probability of losing, I added these two probabilities together, just like we would have off a probability tree. Okay. So to that, we are going to catch up with the action. There's 6.7 seconds left. Louisville is on the line. They're going to shoot a free throw. And they miss. Memphis gets the ball back. Three seconds left. Washington up. And he gets fouled. So now the question is, they're going to go through and they're going to say, is there a three-point on the line? I'll shut up. By the time I fast forward this, I figured it's the same thing as letting it watch. 
And he will go to the line where he is two of three gonna, today. And they're going to check where he's going to shoot it from there. Exactly. The quick look like it may have been a three. Here's This will give us a look. Both behind right there. He's in air. He can cross that line in air. That's not a problem. I'll put the video link to this down below, by the way. And I think the whole game's actually on YouTube anyway. And do the quick back math, folks. They're down two. 73 plus three equals a win. Math on national television, ladies and gentlemen. And he's a freshman. For the season, 72%. If he hits three in a row, Memphis goes to the NCAA championship. Two to go. Okay, so the first ball goes in. Amazing. We're one-third of the way there, Memphis fans. Okay, so back over here, we're going to jump down, and we get... So now it's 75-74. Two shots left. The probability of winning now is 72% squared. So that has just jumped from 37% up to 52, uh, just under 52%. Probability of losing has dropped considerably. Good job, Darius Washington. And the probability of going into overtime has dropped just a touch, but that's okay. Overtime's better than losing, right? All right, so now what, ha so again, probabilities have increased. What is going to happen next? Boy, does that take the pressure off right now? He's got to go one for two for a tie. You can't describe the pressure here. Oh. Now what? All right. No problem. We got one shot left, right? So it's still 75, 74. One shot left. Winning is now off the table. Okay. And now it's just simply 28% chance that they're going to lose the game and 72% chance they're going to tie the game because we only have one shot left. Memphis fans, let's see what happens. Vern, I would be hard-pressed to tell you right now that if you'll, you'll see a more pressurized situation this year in this tournament as we're watching right here. Tournament's on the line. Boo, doo, 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 doo. Somebody's got to go help that kid out. And the first man there I know. is John Calipari. I know. Devastated, and, and I'm not not to belittle it. I mean, I can't imagine the pressure that he was under, and you know, and that's the other thing that these types of problems don't necessarily take into account. But we're just using it as an example to set them some, some things up. So now the question becomes this, and this is what you see at the end of, or you're starting to see more or less in um, some professional, well, actually even college, but a lot of professional games now, where they're saying, okay. You're up by two touchdowns. There's five minutes left. What's the probability of you winning the game? They're starting to do these number crunching things. So the chances of Louisville, if, if Louisville doesn't foul, Memphis has a 40% chance of winning because uh, Washington is generally a 40% free throw or three point shooter. Excuse me. Okay. So, and since Memphis had a 37.3% chance of winning, if we if going to the line, so it's a done deal, right? Well, not quite, because remember, you also got this tie-up possibility over here. So Memphis could end up going on winning it at overtime, maybe coming back, you know, they're riding momentum, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so obviously, you know, not that teams that are up try to follow people necessarily, but the question is, this is gives you some background in terms of how and why, both by how binomial distributions work, but also how and why some of the analytics work. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. Go, um, Make sure you comment, like, subscribe down below. Head over to part two. We'll formalize this so you can see how to do it without having to make charts all of the time. But again, the charts, if you get stuck, is a good place to go. I'm babbling at this point, so it's time for me to go. Talk to you soon.